China imports more recyclable goods than any other country. But earlier this year, China stopped accepting a long list of imported plastic and paper waste and implemented much stricter guidelines for what it was willing to take in. That dramatic shift in policy is coming out of a national campaign to reduce the country's carbon footprint. But it's also a signal that China won't settle for being the trash collector for the rest of the world. We're going to go to our single stream cycling facility, which has been the most impacted by the, by the waste bans in China. And that's over on the far end? It is on the far end, yep. All right, let's go. Okay. BJ Harvey's family has been in the garbage business for more than a century. They sort recyclables, squeeze them into cubes, and then, under normal circumstances, sell them to companies that turn the paper and plastic into all kinds of industrial products. What percentage of the stuff that is processed here ends up going overseas? Probably half of the recycling wow. that we do. And what percentage of that goes to China? Oh, it, it was probably like 90. Yeah. Okay. Typically, there might be a few dozen one-ton cubes sitting around. But now, Harvey's got thousands of them. We usually have inventory that sits for a couple days and then moves out. This has been sitting for a couple months. It's just a monstrosity amount of, amount of inventory that we're sitting on. The pileup started back in January, when China banned the import of 24 different types of paper and plastic, including things like reusable water bottles. China also changed its requirements for the recyclables it still accepts. It only wants higher grade clean stuff that's almost perfectly sorted. The rate that China is now mandating is 0.5% contamination. Is that, is that even possible? In my opinion, it's not. We never thought it would come to the point that it's come to. We wouldn't have put all the infrastructure and money into, into the facility if we had. Is stuff still coming in faster than you can get it out? Yeah, right now. How much has it affected your business? Millions, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a big number. Harvey isn't alone. Shipments of American recyclables to China were down by 36% through April of this year. Waste Dive, an industry publication, estimates that drop-off has impacted recycling programs in at least 27 states. Don't get me started. <laughs> We're offering them to everybody, but there's, that's the challenge. Jonathan Sloan is a broker. He buys recyclables from people like Harvey and then sends them to countries around the world. And China's new policy has made that work a lot harder. I've seen lots of bad markets in the 30 years I've been doing this but I've never seen anything like this. It's had a dramatic impact on the entire industry, east to west, north to south. What's changed in the marketplace as a result of this decision? Price has been dramatically reduced on things like mixed paper. Two years ago, getting $75, $85 a ton for your mixed paper to being charged in a lot of cases to take it away. So you have to pay now for someone to take something that they used you to get paid to pay for. you for? Right. That has totally upended the economics of a lot of recycling programs. U.S. recyclers haven't just had to take whatever price they can get. They've also had to scramble to find new buyers. In the first four months of the year, recyclable paper and plastic exports to India, Indonesia, Taiwan, and Vietnam have all more than doubled. With all this material going to ports that it wasn't going to before, how's it affecting those ports? I mean, are these countries able to accept that much stuff? We've seen uh, just over the last week or so, Vietnam enact restrictions because they just don't physically have the capacity to handle all those containers that have come into those ports. If China doesn't come back, if we can't find places to send our recyclable waste, what happens? Well, I think the worst case scenario is Programs stop. Meaning we stop recycling. Th that's sort of the worst case scenario. At the moment, some states are already giving companies waivers to throw out recyclables. It's happening in more than a dozen states, including Massachusetts, where more than 4,000 tons of paper and plastic recyclables and more than 10,000 tons of glass have been sent to landfills. Have you gotten waivers to throw any of this stuff out? No. Have you thought about applying for them? At some point, if we're forced into it, maybe. I don't think that will come. I hope it doesn't. But there's no secret. I mean, we need China. No question. 
China isn't the first developing country to leave these bottom feeder businesses behind. And it won't be the last, which is a good thing for the global economy, but it will continue to have huge ramifications for how we live on this planet. Recycling's not as easy as people think, that you know, you throw it into this big bin and it you know, magically turns into something that's super valuable. And now people can see like, okay, this is what happens when you rely on another country and they decide that they don't want your stuff anymore.